out of the Indian Wells Tennis Open. Now the 5AA forecast afternoon showers expected a top of 32 today. Tomorrow a shower or two a top of 20. Partly cloudy 23 on Saturday. Mostly sunny 26 on Sunday. Then partly cloudy on Monday and Tuesday with tops of 28 and 31. More news as it happens on 5AA. Peter Godfrey talking Adelaide on 1395 5AA. Seven minutes past five Thursday morning and 24 degrees at the moment. Been a warmest night we've had all week. Let's head across the ditch, see what uh, what's happening over in New Zealand. Selwyn Manning, editor of eveningreport.nz, joins us. G'day, Selwyn, how's your side of the ditch? Yeah, pretty good, Peter. Uh, ooh, it's, it's dry in Auckland at the moment. Um, blue sky's kind of showing through as the sun came up this morning. Uh, forecasts are that there will be a little bit of rain, maybe even drizzle, drizzle later in the afternoon and Potentially around 23 degrees, it might creep up to 25, but they do believe um, the weather shift to more rainy will just cool it down to back to 23 again after okay. that. Very not nice. too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. Hey, want to find out a bit about what's happening over your side of the ditch regarding Uber. It's a fairly controversial issue over this side of the ditch. Now, um, I assume Uber are making inroads into New Zealand? Yes. Yes. To what, um, to what, to, to what degree? Wellington. Auckland, Wellington, predominantly. So, what uh, are they operating in any great capacity at the moment? Uh, a little bit under the radar. Um, people are aware that it's there, but there has been has not been any considered major marketing campaign or anything like that. Now, um, if just look on the um, Uber website for Auckland, for example. You know, it's all there. You can book your your, your ride into any particular place. Pay up, pay up front as is the way. Mm. Um, also, we've seen the areas where um, Auckland International Airport, for example, Peter, um, it, it, you know, the, how, how the airports and, and also the domestic airport terminal as well, they, they'll control the flow of cabs there. Mm. Now, what, the, what they've been putting out in recent weeks, <clears throat> going back about three weeks ago, actually, was a, a call for tender. And what they're saying is they'll be able to guarantee their uh, people travelling through the airport that there will be a safe um, and secure, um, uh, well, well um, educated driver, and what they meant by that was they know the, the maps, and know where they're going, mm. um, and all of that type of thing. So the, the successful um, company that it gets the tender out there at the airport will tick all of those boxes. Okay, um, and, and yeah. the expectation is is that the cost will be slightly higher than what a lot of people often get at the airport at the moment, which is a bit of a free-for-all at times. Hmm. Um, and uh, th- that, in some ways, in some courts, uh, there are suggestions also that that's stopping Uber from actually getting um, uh, people at the airport itself. Oh, OK. So nothing to stop Uber, obviously, um, taking people to the airport, to the yeah. various terminals. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that looks like a move where the government regulation on, on, on taxis here is a lot... A lot, um, you know, it's a lot more slack. It's a lot easier, put it that way, than what it is in Australia, in particular South Australia. Okay, so I was going to ask you. So, so how does how does it, the, the 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 taxi system or the taxi industry operate generally in New Zealand? Well, generally, you know, you you would have to have a, a license, obviously, mm. to to um, be a taxi driver and a specific license for that. Yeah. Um, then you know your company would be listed, and and all of that type of thing. But there are different. Different layers, if you like, you know, from the corporate cabs, you know, that you yeah. see, you know, taking uh, the toss around, if you like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, then, then you have, you know, the ones that have been around for quite a while, um, that where the car fleet, the cab fleet, is pretty, pretty new, you know, mm. it's um, well maintained. Um, the drivers in a suit, um, Auckland Taxi Co-op, um, be one of those in that band, and. It just gives some price indications, you know, um, oh, I should say. And then underneath that, there are the budget taxis. Um, that, you know, the cars are a bit rough around the edges. Um, they might need a bit of a clean. The drivers might be um, a little bit unsure on where they're going at times. <laughs> but uh, right, yeah, for the main yeah. routes, like from Auckland CBD, if we start at that level, yeah. um, the budget taxis will often guarantee a ride from Auckland, central Auckland area to in Auckland International Airport Terminal or the domestic terminal at around about 30 New Zealand dollars. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I think you know uh, the Australian dollar is about ninety cents, um, or New Zealand's about ninety cents to the Australian dollar on this. So a bit of a conversion there. So about thirty um, New Zealand dollars anyway on that one. Um, then you've got um, the co-op will come in. That ride will cost you a minimum of about 
sixty dollars, maybe seventy dollars. Okay, so a big um, difference. So almost double. Mm, mm. Um, the corporate cabs well, well above that, of course. But um, then you know you're getting what you pay for, I suppose. Mm. Uh, also, they do a lot of waiting for their for their clients as well, so it all factors in there, of course. Um, yeah. But Uber, interestingly, putting in the same kind of route, Peter, um, is what you'd pay in the budget area, thirty dollars. That comes through um, on Uber for forty dollars to fifty seven dollars. Oh, okay, okay. Forty-two. So, so say minimum of forty-two dollars. So it's mm. up above the budget, guys. Um, but as far as the regulation is concerned, it is reasonably relaxed here. Yeah, um, okay. that's the main point I would say. And there have been, you know, quite an explosion of people that are actually operating in the taxi space. Um, yeah. There was a few years ago, maybe five years ago, six years ago, there was quite a revolt that was going on, particularly in the in a city. Um, in, in the evening, you know, where there's often obviously a lot of money to be made, and there were like, you know, we were kind of referring to it colloquially as the taxi wars, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was getting pretty um, tense out there, but that seemed to sort of the, itself out, um, as is the way in, with previous, you know, the current government and previous governments. Is the market will sort itself out, Peter, is the attitude, and <laughs> that seems to have um, done this. But Uber, yes, I would imagine that in the next year or so we're going to have the same kind of. Um, same kind of discussions in a bigger way um, than what we have been and more in line with okay. what is happening in Sydney, Melbourne and Adelaide. Have, have established taxi operators raised concerns at all about Uber or has it not sort of hit the, uh, the agenda in a great way yet? It hasn't hit the agenda in a great way. Mm. Um, that, that's, that, that's the uh, feeling on the street. Like, you know, when you, you get into a cab here in Auckland, you might be going to the airport, I always have a bit of a chat, you know. And, uh, yep, yeah, yeah. As, as we all do, as and, we do um, yep, yep. It, it seems like they're not not that sensitive about it. They're more sensitive about their own competition in their own space, whether it be their budget space or whatever. And um, the Uber one is um, not not kicking in, but the same conversations in Sydney Airport and get a different story. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, this, this is you know absolutely shocking. What it's been doing is um, making it basically pushing us all to insolvency type of thing and hmm. all of that kind of talking. To you, how can you maintain your car at this level when you know Uber's coming in underneath? And um, in some ways, you know, there's kind of parallels to this type of um, business model, I guess. You know, like some some people would say that the online advertising and advertising itself um, affected in other ways by um, being undercut by things like Google AdSense and all of those other players in the market. So, you know, it's, it seems like a big shift in business models all over the place. Yeah, indeed. Uh, that yeah. I just made relevance to that because it's the same kind of argument that the taxi drivers were saying. Yeah, indeed, indeed. No, that's interesting, interesting to take a look at because, it, yeah, it is a, a, a an issue here uh, uh, at the moment with say, legal in some states, not legal in others, and uh, generally the, the established players not happy about uh, the business model of Uber and you know, undermining their business is uh, sort of the the common concern that's raised. So yeah, it may be that the um, the the um, debate in Australia is much more acute mm. because it's much more regulated. Yeah, I think I think that could be the case. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. So we just need to have a quick break, but we've got uh, plenty more to talk about, including uh, some, some woes for your economy. You, your, your economy's under a bit of strain, so we'll be right back with you but, on that one, Selwyn. Bit wobbly up there. Bit wobbly, yeah. bit wobbly. All right, Selwyn uh, Manning's with us. He's editor of eveningreport.nz. Any business that isn't moving with the times is going backward, but that's not you. Your business is evolving. So are we. We're resource furniture, and we specialise in designing environments that humanise spaces and connect people. Our design team lives on the cutting edge of tech and trends, and we won't rest until you're ecstatic about your new workwise environment. Work with us. Resource Furniture. Explore the commercial gallery at resourcefurniture.com.au. Where does your Wi-Fi go? If your modem is plugged in where your phone line enters the house, in a front room, most of your Wi-Fi signal is beaming straight into your garden. But you can move your modem connection with Jim's antennas. Jim does TV antennas, phone points and data connections. He'll relocate the phone point to the centre of your home so the Wi-Fi goes to every room, not the garden or your neighbour's house. Jim's antennas for TV and data connections. 131546. Jim'sAntennasAdelaide.com.au Trust is at the heart of the matter. The key to any lasting relationship. We aim to get it right the first time. Give Ken a call. Ken Hall Plumbers, your local plumbers since 1983. More than just a plumber. 
Give Ken a call, 8364 5855. Are you thinking about retirement living? Well, it's time to assess your lifestyle now and for the future. Let the Metcalf Group assist you in finding your perfect retirement home in well-established communities across the metropolitan area. With more than 20 years' experience in the retirement industry, your search begins at Metcalf Group SA. They'll be able to help you take the first steps on your retirement living journey. Think retirement, think Metcalf Group. Contact them on 8274-0277 or visit metcalfgroupsa.com.au. Get the garden you want at Garden Grove. With everything from the ground up, plants and instant lawn, mulches, soils and bark, landscape and building materials, hardware, pavers and more. There's a playground for the kids while you enjoy coffee or lunch in the cafe. Garden Grove, Golden Grove Road, Golden Grove. Open seven days. Phone 8251 for delivery to your area. Garden Grove, the garden that I want. Investing with Angus Securities is more than just a great rate. It's convenience because you're dealing with someone who's local. Angus Securities. Call 84104343. Are you a smoker or ex-smoker and aged between 40 and 80? Been diagnosed with emphysema or COPD and are short of breath? The Respiratory Trials Unit at the Repatriation General Hospital are currently looking for volunteers for a study that looks at a new and exciting therapy for treating these symptoms. You'll have access to excellent medical and research facilities. Participation may improve your respiratory health and that of others. Phone 8276 6480 to find out more. A message from the Government of South Australia. Want to get your garden looking its best? Look for Brunnings Garden Products. Because with 160 years of history, no one beats Brunnings for value. Especially when it comes to a greener lawn. Mm. Just toss on some Brunnings Green Up and it'll green up any lawn in 7 to 10 days. Brunnings Green Up, part of the Brunnings Lawn Care range. At all good garden centres and hardware stores. Brunnings Garden Products, proudly South Australian owned. 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. This is Peter Godfrey. It's 19 minutes past five, so we're Manning's with us, editor of eveningreport.nz, with all the latest happenings across the ditch in New Zealand. Now, Selwyn, your economy, a little bit uh, a little bit shaky at the moment. Uh, your, your current account deficit uh, deteriorated, um, uh, predominantly sort of centering around problems with the milk industry. Yeah, that's right, Peter. And our um, information was released by Statistics New Zealand yesterday, and um, yes, it shows exactly that the current account deficit ballooning out by 221 million for the December quarter. So that's from September through to December, and it's a total of 1.9 billion dollars here. Now, the problematic elements of this is that the current account deficit had been tracking down to more equitable kind of numbers for some time, um, up to around about two years ago. And uh, then some things started to wobble in the economy, namely dairy, like you alluded to there, Peter. Now, this deterioration is caused um, officially, they're saying, by uh, in part by the value of exported goods falling by just over half a billion dollars in that September quarter. So that's significant, that the value of exported goods falling. Um, that's considering even with our lower dollar, that there was still a problem there. Um, now, the drop was led by the plummeting dairy sector returns that they due significantly apparently to the collapse of the global milk powder prices. Now we've spoken about this um, being a problem shaping up through the latter part of last year and even mid-year last year Peter on your program. Now what it comes down to <clears throat> just to consider here a couple of very quick figures <clears throat> under the whole milk powder price dropped this week by just short of 1% um, down to um, 1,971 US dollars per ton. Now, the Kiwi farmers need to get 3,000 US dollars per ton to break even, so it's a good third below that. Below even, break even. And that's mm-hmm. the, that, that, to break even, that's a big, big problem there, mm. clearly. Now, um, w- w- when the Kiwi dollar is treading water around 66 to 67 cents, you'd expect, you know, um, that you'd get some pretty good gains here, but it just shows you how much of a collapse that there has been and that drop in the uh, the global milk powder prices. Many farmers are facing insolvency and consequently really the, the narrative has shifted in New Zealand in recent weeks, Peter, uh, from how farmers can trade out of this mess and how Fonterra, the 
global uh, milk export or dairy export giant um, that is owned by the farmers co-op um, around the, and, 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 and the government's influence there, how it would get a better deal. That narrative has shifted in the um, in the country to not how you can trade out of this, but how much is the farm worth on the open market, and that's obviously problematic. Um, a lot of New Zealanders are extremely sensitive to overseas um, buyers coming in and buying mm. up the farms when the farmers yep. are under stress like this. Yeah. It's also pointed out on the weekend that many farmers that are facing insolvency at the moment or considering leaving their farms and selling up are ones that are fourth generation farmers. It's not like they're new ones. Um, so there's all sorts of really problematic things there. Yesterday, Peter, Fonterra, that global giant I was talking about, the export giant, the dairy export giant, it announced the permanent closure of one of its South Island sites in Kaikoura. Um, so that, that's significant. It's, uh, it's director of the New Zealand manufacturing at Fonterra. He said yesterday, while it's difficult for the people involved, we have a responsibility to our farmer shareholders and unit holders and our customers to be as efficient as possible across the business especially given the low milk price. So it's starting to actually impact on closures mm, um, to mm. milk factories and things like that. Now, beyond milk, um, the import values also declined. Um, that, that softened in some way the big hit that um, would, would come from this current account deficit that is ballooning out. Now, Statistics New Zealand, as I said, put out those figures, Peter, and that was yesterday. Um, the current account ba- uh, balance is a deficit in total, Oh, for the year I'm talking about here of $7.7 billion, which is around about 3.1% of GDP. So it's getting into areas, Peter, where it's obviously a concern. Um, once again, um, the, it's a deteriorating current account. It's contributed a lot to by um, New Zealand um, and, you know, householders, our banking system and the householders having mortgages to the banks and most of the banks are owned by overseas um, interests, so yeah. therefore the indebtedness of New Zealand to overseas entities is well out of kilter to basically what the other overseas entities and, and as a whole owe New Zealand, and that's how the calculations kick in, really. Okay. Just on the milk, now it's interesting, there's just recently here there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, uh, controversy over the sale of a, a, a dairy in Tasmania that was New Zealand owned and the sale was approved to a, a, a Chinese entity um, uh, and the controversy about a Chinese purchase of that but also um, about how much of the uh, the milk products in this day are going to be going to China because of the huge demand there for, for, for milk products, particularly baby formula. Yeah. So interesting that we're, you know, it's sort of on the one side of the ditch, you know, this huge demand here but then you guys having the the opposite. Yeah, well, there, there's a, a lesson in caution around those elements. Um, what was found was, yes, in the uh, first five years, first six years of the free trade agreement with China, our um, farmers made a lot of money, and was it like you've heard me probably mention in mm. times gone past, that was referred to as white gold. Yeah, yeah. And that the exports of um, the milk powder in particular, the commodity really, um, was sent to China um, in those ways, huge returns. But there was a stockpile and a glut build up, built up, um, and that's where the price overall for global milk powder has been dropping ever since. And is there stockpiling going on in China? Is it used as a lure to get other markets in and become dependent with China? Um, time will tell, but what we do know that... It, the United States dairy producers have been subsidised quite significantly when when they're facing times like this and they're able to basically survive a lot better than the freewheeling kind of economies like New Zealand is when things hit a wall. Yeah. Um, also, the North Europeans are ratcheting up too and so feeding into the market um, seems to be, um, you know, there is a glut out there. So the, um, the balance sheets around those entering into um, the dairy you know, <clears throat> commodity kind of export area on the milk powder really got a question um, the, the longevity yeah, of that perhaps at indeed. this stage c- considering the New Zealand experience there is diversification out there mm. <clears throat> um, in, in many areas but even so um, for, for dairy farmers diversifying it perhaps into cheese takes a whole change of herd from a Frisian cow mm. perhaps to a Jersey cow mm. with higher butter fat and things in the milk. Yeah. Now with that, that kind of um, move, if they, even if they've already done that, um, just note that this week alone um, the cheese on the on the global market dropped by five over 5% and, and um, butter went down by over 2%. So that's just in the week.
Yeah, yeah. Hey, so I'm getting short of time, so I've just wanted to quickly, but uh, a bit of sport to finish with. You guys clobbered India in the cricket in the 2020 yeah. match. Uh, well done, well done. But yeah, uh, we're... 47 runs, Peter. Well, yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> well done, well done. Um, and... You're Apparently going... it was the Black Caps um, took India by surprise by putting up a, a spin bowling attack. But, yeah, as, as we understand, New Zealand cricket put out a thing yesterday and it was saying that 6am um, be today uh, in Indian time. Um, the team's travelling north to the edge of the Himalayas to the hillside city of Darashala. Um, and there it's, uh, they'll find snow, the da- Dalai Lama, um, right up there by the Himalayas and the old rival Australia. I'm going to be playing you guys up way up there. It'll be... Fantastic game by the look of it. We'll be playing that you guys tomorrow, Peter. Fantastic. May the best team win, Selwyn. There you go. <laughs> there May we the go. Best team win. <laughs> Have a great week. We'll catch up with you again next week. Okay, Peter. Thanks, Bye. Selwyn. Bye-bye. Selwyn Manning, editor of EveningReport.nz. Are you thinking about retirement living? Well, it's time to assess your lifestyle now and for the future. Let the Metcalf Group assist you in finding your perfect retirement home in well-established communities across the metropolitan area. With more than 20 years' experience in the retirement industry, your search begins at Metcalf Group SA. They'll be able to help you take the first steps on your retirement living journey. Think retirement, think Metcalf Group. Contact them on 82740277 or visit metcalfgroupsa.com.au. You make me Leo Sayer and Lulu in concert. Two British pop legends live on stage for the very first time. Performing their greatest hits together and alone. Relive five decades of incredible music. One show only June 29 at the Festival Theatre. Book now at bass.net.au. It's Agostino Mitsubishi's run-in, run-out demo clearance sale. Agostino Mitsubishi is overstocked with demos and they all have to go-go. Plus, they're offering huge dollars for your trade-in. Go, go! To Agostino Mitsubishi's run-in, run-out demo clearance. While stocks last with massive trade-in offers available. Hurry, it's all got to go-go. Visit agostinomitsubishi.com.au. Go, go! Shirley Harris here. I used to worry about mum whenever I went on holidays. Was she okay? Now I don't worry because she has a Care Alert smart dialer. One press on her pendant and up to five people can be notified of an emergency, including triple zero. And there are no monitoring fees. Order yours for only $299. Plus, if you go to carealert.com.au, use the promo word Easter, you'll also receive a blood pressure monitor worth $50 for free. That website again, carealert.com.au Hello, Frank Walker from National Tiles. This week only at National Tiles, we've got beautiful high-gloss floor tiles from 1995 per square metre. Yes, that's right. This week only at National Tiles, beautiful high-gloss floor tiles from 1995 per square metre. Suitable for any room in your home. Rush into a National Tile store near you now or go online to the very best tile website in Australia nationaltiles.com.au One of the state's best golf courses is also one of its most hidden gems. I'm talking about Thaxted Park Golf Club. Its flawless centre and irrigated fairways and pure greens will really lift your game. If you're not getting everything you want out of your current golf membership, speak to Thaxted Park Golf Club today. You'll be quite surprised how many rewards are waiting for you. Take a look online. Go to thaxteadparkgolfclub.com.au. A true golfer's golf course. This 